just follow me. So we are just buying water and using the toilets <laughs> before we get on the boat. <laughs> Come on, you can share. The bigger birds are very territorial. <laughs> Look at him, he's chasing the little guy away. She's afraid. Look at him walking on the boat so comfortably. <laughs> He's doing it with attitude. <laughs> Sidewards is not a good move, you know? I mean, I can go forward back. Welcome on board. Stura hopes you may enjoy the trip. This Whoa. boat is authorized by Prefectura Naval Argentina meeting current safety standards. Lifeguards are located over your heads. Bathrooms are located asterns. All passengers must remain seated during navigation and wait for instructions from the crew from landing when it arrives in port. For any emergency, the crew will inform you on how to act. To preserve the environment, do not throw waste to the river. The ship has garbage bins for its disposal and we remind you that smoking is forbidden. Stula thanks you again for choosing us and we wait for our next meeting to continue providing you our services. But it's okay to use now? and a little snack, a muffin. You have the washrooms in the back. And I want to give a big round of applause for the new crew that will take us around the islands. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so, we left Tigre. Tigre is still on both sides. The central office of the Navy that looks after the security on the city and on the islands is here on the left. All this, as it says, Prefectura is the main navy building, this is a monument main monument activity monument. of Tigre. All the clubs are along this river, which has took, and a few very famous are on the main one. If anyone feels you want to go outside, no problem. If not, stay for a few minutes. And that you will pass with the Alpha Hook. We have we took Luján River. Luján. Our Lady of Luján is the same patron of Argentina. To the right, it's one of the oldest clubs besides the one next to where we got off the bus. This is La Marina. It's an English style building. There are lots of uh, there's many English influence, much English influence on uh, the islands and on the houses we'll see on the coast. That's a still taking it to the left. So this is the division in between the continent to the left and the island on the right. As you will see, no bridges. From the city, the only thing that crosses underneath the river are the big pipes with uh, the electricity connection to the islands. Because the houses, of course, they have electricity. About business development, mostly relate to the agro activities. I mean, so on the left side you will see a few boats and behind some warplanes. That's a naval museum. Some of those planes were used by our Navy force and the army in the war with England for the Malvinas, the modern ones you see, or the relatively modern, um, in 1982. And the big shed, the wine shed on the left, is a Navy Museum. You know, it's only half an hour drive, but just for a weekend or to spend the day, can you have a barbecue or you eat at some of the restaurants. It's a great four or five hour activity. See a bit of green. 
is the brownish color in the water. And that has to do with the sediments. It has, has clay, has silt, has sand. That's what makes the water so brown. Even in this brown water, people tend to swim. They still row, but not on this main river. The next ones, we might see. Now the delta is very quiet. The best day, the peak day to come is Saturday and Sunday. And the summertime. We are about to enter into the fall. Dario, hola. Hola. Café. This palace from those glorious days of Argentina in the early 1900s that is upcoming on the left side has a sign that says MAT Museum of Art of Tigre MAT This building is from 1912 It was a casino there was a massive hotel next to, the hotel does not exist anymore. But this is from that Belle Epoque time, the very refined time of Argentina. Since 20 years ago, the Tigre Art Museum takes place inside. island on the right, we'll do a big loop and we'll end up on the other side, very close to the port where we left. Oh, look at that. This is the Carapachay River, Carapachay was one of the tribes with natives, pay attention because maybe on the trees on post we had a few there, we'll see the cormorants, they're black cormorants, yeah, they're not tropic cormorant, they dry themselves out, these cormorants they have no, no, no grease, no, no, on the skin, on the feathers. So every time they swim to catch the fish, they get wet and they need to dry out. There is a gas station on the right, exclusive for boats. This little boat with the aquatic sign. And coming to Tigre is like going back 40, 50 years in time. Everything is very quiet, but we'll get to see the boats at some point. There are some modern speed boats people use on the weekends. All the wood boats. We'll find the mix in between very luxury houses and very modest ones. Think that the houses, they have electricity, they have phone line, they have Wi-Fi. What they don't have is water network, so they need to get the water. They either buy it or they bring it from the city. We still cook with gas in Argentina, natural gas, so they get the proper tanks in the front. They still take water from the river and they filter it. They use it for minor things in the house or the toilet. And all the houses have a septic tank. That's a sewage system. Look on the right. This is the type of house originally from the islands. Now we'll find some better ones. Come in. How expensive are the houses here? You need to think that you could buy a house for maybe 30,000 US dollars. The modest ones, maybe not on this main river, the interior rivers, because this is the, the highest part of the island is the coast. But then you go into the islands a little bit further from the coast and you need to walk. You find cheaper houses. And you could be paying up to 
maybe 150, 200,000 at the most on a very, very nice house along this river next to the coast. Most of the services are provided with different boats. The most common ones to see are the bus boats and the market boats. We're going to see a market boat. There's a market boat ahead and on the right. It's called Cachito. We'll have a big Cachito name on the side. How do you say Cachito in English? Cachito. Same. Cachito, no translation. It's a common nickname we use. Cacho. Cachito has in the back part some propane tanks, wine and beer, of course, on top. Here is Cachito on the right. They sell food, they sell drinks, they sell charcoal for the barbecue, those black bags on top is charcoal. They seem to be very stressed out. People on the island have a different concept on times. And as far as I know, this lifestyle does not match a lot with working regularly in Buenos Aires. Some people, they do work closer to Buenos Aires. There are some islands closer to Buenos Aires. But going back and forth, it takes by boat at least an hour. There are some, this company provides a shuttle. And if not, jumping on, going to Tigre, taking a car, it's another hour and a half at least islands or the world with the boats. The islands produce uh, um, wood, uh, we have the timber, the timber production here. Poplar is the main tree, we have plantations of poplars, some citrix, orange juice, sorry, oranges, lemon, a type of walnut, and the main industry here has to do with weaker, the type of plant with the one you make baskets or outdoor furniture. The largest production is coming from these islands. Besides tourism, some cabins, bungalows where you stay. The lack of services, that, that's compensated, but you need to find a way. And then the main thing that could happen is that when we have some storms, there are no hurricanes, no earthquakes here, but we do have a storm that is called the Southeast Storm. So there's wind coming from the Southeast. Southeast literally um, um, blows against the normal flow of this river. This river flows from North to South. And the Southeast is like pushing the water backwards. So the level of the water starts going up. At the worst southeast I've seen, the water was up to, let's say, the grass here on the left, the tree, up to the base of the tree. That means that there's a possibility when it rains, and we have this southeast wind at the level of the water, but not because of the rain, just because of the wind, gets up to the houses. And that's the main reason why the houses are built, as you see, the one we are passing now to the left they are usually built higher than the island. On a type of house we call Palafit House. Palafit houses tend to be in the water, on the water actually. But this was, there are chances that it gets flooded. It doesn't happen often. The water raising the level and reaching the grass might be two or three times a year. It's very unusual that it gets in the house, but it's a possibility. It's lifestyle. In a few minutes, I'll show you a few more places we have of interest. Look at that. <laughs>
the left, the boats, those no, are the bus boats. Oh, and those ones specifically are used for the school. Okay, Sweet. and there's a chapel somewhere. The church is as well on the right. Just behind the type of tree planted next to, called casuarina. It's a pine tree, very much used, introduced by the European settlers. Because of the roots, hold the ground next to the river. And you see more casuarines planted here on the right. Two trees are very useful for this. Now the one on the left now is the willow. The willow also, that's native from the islands. This type of willow that's used to hold the ground. Because imagine, the problem you have once you get rid of the plants in the front, because the plants are the natural protector, because they are the ones that catch the sediment, they are the ones that form the islands. But people, of course, to make it more comfortable to approach and to use the edge of the island, they take the plants from there. But then they have to face the issue of not losing ground and in order to preserve, they do the trees, the casuarines on the left, casuarinas, the willows, like the ones you see on the right, you see a mix of willow and casuarine, the pine tree, the tall one. And they also built, that's the most expensive to keep up, the wall. The wall has to be built and maintained by each neighbor, and it's called estacada. So you will see a mix of, of different type of materials. You will find some made in concrete, then you have some made of stones, uh, the plants are the ones on the right. Mix of plants and stones, the pebbles. Some others use wood. The timber, just to build a wall. What the wall makes to the boats, they generates a, a rebound effect. So that's why the boats need to slow down. They, they get mud from the bottom and they fulfill either the island, if it's a little bit broken, an erosion, or they raise the level of the island as well. But definitely they had to be uh, dredged because the sediments keep, keep getting stuck. Happens with all the rivers. Same when track and tree falls they have to remove the tracks from the boat, so if not, they are caught by the boat and it's dangerous. We have a reasonable level, kind of high, for the last days. You could fish here. Most of the people practice fishing, sport fishing, not commercial. There are many carps in the river. They were introduced further north. We have a type of salmon, Salmonidae family, that is a, the golden fish. The taste of the fish coming from this water is very particular because of the mud, it's very muddy. try it in just a few places because the restaurants of course they don't rely on the fishing even more because it's not commercial boat coming on the left. And we'll see a um, whole complex on the right has two houses. This is the, the public library on the right. 
Andeño y Museo Casa Sarmiento. Domingo Faustino Sarmiento. Who's the one that lived in a similar house to the one you see inside the glass box. This is from the 1990s. It was rebuilt and in order to preserve it, they just cover it with the glass. The weather conditions tend to be slightly more intense because of the humidity than what you find in the city. Mr. Sarmiento was one of the first settlers and the one that started writing. He's quite related to the public education in Argentina and later on he became president of the country in 1868. But thanks to him, this place was then tried by the high class, the aristocracy, and eventually became massive. To the left, there's an island, and you get to see how the beginning of an island looks like with all these plants in the front. These people, they decided to keep them. The best look how, how the, the plants just hold, contain the, the water movements just behind us, to the left and behind and the water does not hit the front part of the island so hard. boats on the left there's another market on the right small like a flat boat you will see in just a few seconds this one is called Anita so the host they go house by house selling they do it two or three times a week. They have the islands, they also have little markets where you could buy supplies. We'll see a few more camps and recreational areas. Head on to the left and head on to the right. If anyone needs the washroom, we have them available here on the boat. If you have any questions, bring them to me, I can share with everybody.
hacer, Pablo? No, no te pasa. Bien, che, querido, más o menos en 10, 15 minutos, en 15 estamos. Dale, venite en 15. Abrazo. Back again, we're finishing, we're closing the loop. Tigre is on the left side. That's another part we haven't seen before, it's a fruit port. That's where people from the island, they sell all the stuff they produced. They sell a lot of furniture there as well. Before going home, don't forget to get your box of Havana Alfajores. Last point you can pick up one is at the airport. Ah. Oh my God. You don't know what Havana is? No. We have a very classic type of sweet here called alfajor. Two biscuits with caramel in between and, and covered with chocolate. <laughs> you should buy Havana. They sell boxes of six, boxes of 12. Indeed, I have here to sell. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, but we eat a lot of alfajores here. We had some. On the left side, this is our Disney World. It's the largest amusement park in the country next to the casino. Entertainment for all the ages. They only open the weekends. Because most of the people coming, so well, they are families with their kids, and they, this is cool now. But they operate only in the weekends. In summertime, they are, uh, that's in between December and February, they're all day long open, every day. Now it's March. <laughs> On the right, we saw the city, the port we plan to reach, the one ahead, less than five minutes. Look at the white egret standing on the left. Oh, yeah. Saying us welcome to Tigre, bienvenidos, back again. Mm -hmm. Please make sure you don't leave anything behind when we get off. Get all your stuff.
picareta. ¿Cómo le dicen? La picareta. La picareta. Porque los usan, la, los usan los pibes del ganado. Ah. Bueno, corte de rack, bien. Corte de rack. Pero tiene que ser más, más rapado de los Claro. Va a poner el estado corto, pero que sí. a beautiful experience. Really, really beautiful. I, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It was yeah. a great trip. Beautiful trip. And um, I just wanted to uh, thank you. Thank you for, for all that. Okay. So, it's time to say goodbye. Ciao, <laughs> Ciao.